If you're like me at this time of year, you're thinking about one thing. Am I talking about the start of school? The coming of some cooler fall days? Or even the fall release of the pumpkin spice latte at Starbucks? No, I'm talking about college football. <laughs> You're at Notre Dame, after all. Along with teaching here at Notre Dame, I'm the chaplain for our football team, and I am all fired up about this season. It's awesome to see the hard work during the off season pay off for our guys during the regular season. And during the off season, they just grind away, lifting and training. And every once in a while, I try to stop by the building just to say hi, to encourage the guys, and sometimes to get a workout in myself. Now allow me to be clear about that last part. I do not work out with the team. I work out near the team. They do elite athlete workouts. I do middle-aged priest workouts. During a workout a couple years ago, one of the players joked that I should try pushing the weighted sled that they were using. When I chuckled and went over and grabbed one of the handles, his smiling face turned very serious, and he gently grabbed my wrist and said, Father, I was just kidding. Don't do that. You'll hurt yourself. He wasn't wrong, and probably saved me several days of misery and Advil. During my workouts near them in the spring of 2023, I noticed the players wearing workout shirts with two words on the back. There are two words that I often find difficult to embrace and two words that are definitely countercultural to 21st century Americans. The two words were simply choose hard. The coaching staff intentionally selected these words to remind our student athletes how critically important these months of training were for a successful season. Further, the fact that they were written on the back of their shirts were an encouragement to one another to go the extra mile, to not give up, and to practice the kind of grit and tenacity that will hopefully build lifelong habits for them, and I expect a national championship this year. You heard it here first. These two words have stuck with me, and I appreciate their simple yet challenging message. I also come, came to a realization as well. I struggle to choose hard. I'm much more likely to choose the ease of a text message, the convenience of pay at the pump, the accessibility of online ordering that puts nearly everything at our beck and call, not even our call, our click. I find myself avoiding things that are just hard, like difficult conversations or a task that requires deep attention. But clearly, taking the easy way out is not what our Christian faith is all about. In fact, we're reminded in today's gospel that if anything, being a Christian means some amount of struggle and difficulty. Today we hear the conclusion of John chapter 6, this bread of life discourse. And today's reading picks up right where last week's gospel, last Sunday's gospel, left off. Right after Jesus has told his disciples that whoever eats his flesh and drinks his blood will have eternal life. He tells the crowds, I am the living bread come, from down, come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And what happens? People leave. They're uneasy with the language, and they start to walk away. This is where faith gets really hard. The crowd liked Jesus better when he was multiplying loaves and fishes earlier in this chapter, or when he's healing the sick. But this, this is hard. This is Eucharistic theology that takes faith, and the crowds start to drift. For us, 2,000 years later, when many of us hear the challenges of Jesus throughout the Gospels, we can echo 
the sentiments of the disciples who say, this saying is hard. Who can accept it? In our first reading, Joshua receives, might receive a similar reaction when he challenges the tribes of Israel to reject the pagan gods and to be countercultural. He says, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Or what about the challenging language in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians about laying down our lives for one another and being the servant of one another? Across all of these readings, one thing is clear. Being a faithful Christian is not easy. Our Catholic faith calls us to beliefs and actions that invite us to choose hard. And whether that's theological truths beyond our understanding, the moral teachings of our church, or the church's stance on social justice issues, there's a moment where we too might face that decision. Do I follow the crowd that walks away from Jesus? Or do I stay standing with the disciples and, and standing with the disciples in steadfast friendship with Jesus? Jesus asked the 12 directly, do you also want to leave? And Peter courageously and beautifully speaks up at this moment, master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Each of us at some point in our journey will face doubt or fear or frustration or unbelief in our Christian faith. And we have to answer Jesus' question, maybe it's today, maybe it's even now. Will you leave with the rest of the crowd? Will you look elsewhere for, for fulfillment in an easier way? Or will you stand fast with our Lord? Choose to serve. Choose that for you and your household, you will serve the Lord. Can you and I, by the grace of God, choose hard? This is why we come to this Eucharist. To be strengthened by this community. To be inspired by God's word in our scriptures. And to be fortified by Christ's body and blood that we receive in this Eucharist week after week, day after day, to make the tough choices that follow the gospel and to get up again after we fall. Today, let us pray for the faith to answer as Peter does, to affirm our faith in Christ, even in the face of doubt and hardship. Let us together be a people of faith strengthened by this Eucharist, the body and blood of Christ. Let us encourage one another in our Christian vocation to follow after Jesus and to choose hard.